Hello and good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Eliana Victress. I'll introduce myself um, in a second again. Um, but for the moment, thank you so much for tuning in to our Bay Run Homeowner Energy Efficiency Workshop. Um, tonight, your videos will be off until, or your videos will be off the entire presentation, although you will have options or different times to um, relay your answers in the chat or use the Q&A function at the bottom of your screens um, to submit questions to the panelists. Um, just a little refresher. Here's a reminder of the different icons that you'll be using today. So you have the chat, um, the chat function in the lower left corner, the Q&A button on the right side of that, and then um, the raise hand button in the middle of the toolbar. So, if you are wanting to ask a question out loud, you can raise your virtual hand and we will be able to give you um, access to turn on your microphone later on in the presentation. All right, so like I said, my name is Eliana Matres. I am the Language and Program Specialist at Sustainable Contra Costa and we've teamed up with the Contra Costa County Library to be here for you all tonight. Um, so this is just a quick agenda of what we'll be talking about during this presentation, as it will be um, around an hour. Um, so first, we'll be doing the welcome and introductions, which is what we're doing right now. Um, then we'll talk about the Bay Run Home Plus program. And then you'll get a chance to talk to one of the participating Bay Run contractors um, and ask any questions that you may have. And then we will wrap up our presentation. So thank you again for coming. Um, before we start, I have a question for you all, if you could answer it in the chat. What brings you to this workshop tonight? Um, so again, the question is, what brings you to this workshop tonight? And I'm gonna give you all maybe like a, a minute um, to answer that because we are definitely very interested to hear um, how you heard about this workshop, what you're hoping to learn, things like that. Ooh, awesome. So we have someone interested in full electrification of their home, looking for resources, great, because we have plenty of those. Um, this is a great start. Right. Awesome, awesome. Thank you for your answers in the chat. All right, so um, other answers include energy efficiency and cost savings for a family member's house, um, water sustainability, um, wanting answers from real people about updating your home, making your home more sustainable, insulating um, and single pane windows. We definitely will talk about those. Um, oh, we have someone who's participated in the program before. That's cool. We'll probably want to hear from you. Um, oh, and another one for total home electrification and solar with battery. Awesome. So we will be talking about covering most of those topics today. Um, and we have a wealth of resources for you all. So I'm really glad to hear um, what has brought you to the presentation today. Awesome. Okay. Oh, awesome. And we have someone who's been an environmental educator for many years and wants to fur further educate themselves. So thank you so much for coming, everyone. And we're going to go ahead and get started. All right. So BayRen stands for the Bay Area Regional Energy Network. And BayRen is a collaboration between the nine Bay Area counties to offer energy efficiency program, energy efficiency and energy saving programs with funding from the Public Utilities Commission of California. Um, since 2013, Bayron, the single family program for Bayron has served over 10,000 projects with $21 million in rebates. So that's something that we'll be covering as well. Um, there are Bayron representatives in each of the nine Bay Area counties. These are, um, these are them. Um, our representative here in Contra Costa County is Damian Hardman. Um, and we will also be giving you some information on how to get in touch with Bayren. Um, so here's our program portfolio. Um, the three main functions of Bayren are their residential um, 
function, which is Green Labeling and their Home Plus program for single family residences, which we're talking about today. And then their other, um, their other functions include codes and standards for building, financing, and they've proposed a municipal program um, to build an energy management system. So they're definitely expanding um, as time goes on. So these are some examples of some common problems inside the house. Um, so a lot of you mentioned um, wanting your homes to be more energy efficient. And these are different places in your home that those problems energy might be escaping from or might be utilizing a lot of energy. Um, so some examples of those are old and inefficient furnaces or air conditioners, hot or cold rooms, drafty rooms, condensation on, on windows. Um, so those might be some of the things you're experiencing as well if you are wanting um, to change from single pane windows to double pane windows. Um, so going off of air leakage, that's a big problem in the house. As you can see, there are a lot of ways that air can escape out of your house. Um, so making sure that it's insulated properly is very important. So another problem is poor insulation or no insulation. And we know that that can keep, um, it's something that definitely works for both winter and summer. Um, Insulation is the sweater or blanket of your home. That's a good way to put it, I think. Um, so, and it's also the most cost-effective measure when combined with air seals. So not only insulating, but sealing as well to make sure that no air escapes your house. Um, another problem here is at is leak are leaky and uninsulated air ducts. So average duct leakage is about 30 percent. Um, this makes attics and crawl spaces more comfortable for rats and spiders and less comfortable for you. Um, duct tape is good for everything except sealing ductwork and it's prohibited by the building code. So it's really important that these air ducts are properly sealed. Um, so indoor air quality is actually about two to five times worse than outdoor air quality according to the EPA. Um, many of us spend about 90% of the day in buildings and children are especially susceptible. Um, so it's really important to have a healthy home in it. And that's one of the great benefits of having an energy efficient home is being able to keep contamination out of your house um, from things that are generated by energy. So combustion products, carbon dioxide and particulate matter, um, this is a great way to also improve your air quality and have additional health benefits um, by doing these projects. Um, once energy waste is reduced, the systems become more efficient. So ideally this will help eliminate combustion and gas burning appliances in the home. Um, gas leaks are something that are very common. Um, and in case anyone is wondering why cities prohibit the use of gas, um, electricity is cleaner for indoor air and the reducti reduction of greenhouse gas emissions. Um, speaking of which, that is some, something that you can encounter in the kitchen. Um, so running, running a gas stove for about 20 minutes makes the air in your home heavier and it blows the one hour national ambient air quality standard for nitrogen dioxide by 50 to 100%. So it's a really big change. Um, all right, and then electrification, which is great that all of you, most of you are here to hear about that today. Um, so the average life expectancy of heating and cooling systems is about 10 to 15 years. Um, so while replacing these household appliances may have a cost associated with the new system and installing the new system. Um, the difference in cost between the new system and the old system um, will, be, will be very noticeable um, because your new systems will be more efficient, will be highly efficient. Um, additionally, 
electrification allows improved safety and reduced maintenance. Um, sealed combustion furnaces draw in air from outside in order to conserve energy and improve safety. Um, combustion gases are completely sealed away and vented directly to outside, reducing concerns about backdrafting and unsafe carbon monoxide levels in your home. Um, Um, so while we have talked about some of the common areas that encounter problems in your home, I'm sure you're wondering how, how do I start? Where do I start? Um, so you're in luck. We have a lot of resources and information about that. Um, so the Bay Run Home Plus program offers the following services, which we'll review in more detail over the coming slides. Um, but they're an online home evaluation with opportunity for a free energy efficiency kit. And fun fact, this is also something that the library provides. So you are able to borrow an energy efficiency kit for your home um, to try and do this home evaluation. And to do that, you can visit your local library to use one. Um, Bayron also provides energy advising and they will give you your energy data and usage analysis, which can be really helpful to identify the problem areas in your home, um, cash rebates, and a big benefit of this program is being able to work with qualified participating contractors um, like the one we have for you here today. So participating contractors are super important for the Bay Run program. The program requires that homeowners use a participating contractor. Um, and that's because we want the con contractors working in your home to be fully trained in the whole house approach, as well as a different program requirements. Um, so that customers can receive the best rebates for their homes, increase performance. Um, these contractors are especially trained and hold cer certificated um, and are certificated from the Building Performance Institute, which is essentially a training program on the whole house approach. Um, contractors are also required to go to trainings. Um, so sorry, um, training specific to the home upgrade program. So they'll understand um, how to get you all rebates. And one of the great parts for homeowners is that the contractor does all the necessary paperwork to submit your project and get your rebate. So you will not need to forget about forgetting to claim your rebate um, because your contractors will do it as they will be very, very well versed in it. Um, so to choose a contractor, you will go to bayrun.org. And as this is a, a service that's available to the nine Bay Area counties, um, there are a lot of participating contractors. So to nar narrow your search down, there are different ways that you can search. Um, for example, you can search by county. So as a Contra Costa resident, I will <laughs> most likely select um, other contractors that are from Contra Costa County. Um, in addition to that, you can search by business name, if you already have an idea of someone you'd like to work with, or the services provided, which is really important in instances where you might be, um, you know, wanting to work on a certain thing, like a lot of you were. And additionally, you can search by languages spoken. So if you want a contractor who speaks Spanish, for example, you'll be able to search by that as well. Um, so there are, a lot of different financing options that you can explore just because while you will get your rebates, this is after the fact, after the program, after the project is just about finished or finished. Um, Bayron does not cover the full cost of any changes to your house. Um, Bayron covers part of the cost, but here are some examples of ways to finance your projects. Um, though we do encourage you to please research online about what works best for you just because everyone is different. Um, besides rebates, there are a variety of financing options that are available to help you complete your upgrade. Um, at this time, I will refer all of you to the Sustainable Contra Costa website um, on our energy page where you will be able to find some information about energy efficiency um, and with links to Bayrun um, Bay resources. 
Um, in California, the most frequent types of financing are credit cards, so unsecured financing that often has that often have variable interest rates, um, mortgage products like home equity lines of credit, energy efficient mortgages and rehab loans. Um, and another option is PACE financing. Um, and for the individual who is interested in solar, you can also look into uh, financing solar with, these, um, with this type of financing. Um, most of us are familiar Hi. with- Ellie, could, yes. I, could I cut in for just half a minute here? Yeah. Um, just to be clear, uh, the Bayren program has a maximum right now of $5,000 per home uh, in terms of the rebates that they can offer. Now that is in fact a, an accumulative total. Um, and so you can go in, I believe there's one individual who's been in the program before, uh, may have gotten some insulation done, may have replaced a furnace or something like that. Uh, may have some other ideas as to other things that they want to do now. So uh, they can get back into the program and pick up additional uh, rebates. The rebates are broken down by the different activities, such as you can get so much for insulation, you can get so much for uh, replacing an old uh, furnace, an old water heater. Uh, there is some difference in the um, size of the rebate, depending upon the technology that you choose. Uh, for example, if you replace an old uh, uh, gas-fired furnace or with a new gas-fired furnace and it meets the new efficiency requirements, uh, you will get a rebate. Uh, but if you were to replace an old gas furnace with a new heat pump unit, uh, the heat pump units tend to be um, much more efficient. Uh, and of course, they're all electric, so you get rid of the combustion products. Uh, in a situation like that, you can get a larger rebate uh, for doing that kind of work. And as Ellie mentioned, uh, the rebates do not cover the entire cost of the project. Uh, it's intended to be an incentive uh, towards being able to step up, uh, get new equipment, and of course, get the savings also from uh, the improved energy efficiency. The program does not cover big stuff like solar panels and um, uh, double pane windows. And the reason being that uh, as, if you know anything about the cost of those items, $5,000 per dwelling would not go very far in getting you too many windows or, or uh, too many solar panels. So uh, that's why these other fi fin financing options are very important uh, because you can, in fact, um, do something much larger than it can be covered by Bayren. And Bayren can be part of the answer to um, to reducing the cost of the project that you have in mind. Thank you, Ellie. Awesome, thank you, Doug. And Doug is my colleague from Sustainable Contra Costa, and he is also here with a wealth of knowledge to answer some questions about the Bay Run program and the different rebates. All right. Um, next, we have the Home Energy Advisor um, program service that's available using um, the Bay Run Home Plus program. So you'll hear a lot of information tonight and it's definitely understandable if you can't remember all of it, um, but this is a really important thing to remember. So this program includes the advice of a free home upgrade advisor. Um, the advisors are just as educated as contractors in the whole house approach and the rules of the program. Um, they can help you every with every step as you decide whether or not to participate in the home up, upgrade program. Um, they are an independent third party, so they can also help you select a contractor, determine if this program is right for you, and also point you to complementary programs that might be available, such as water saving programs or financing programs, like Doug and I mentioned. Um, you can reach the advisors by phone, so this is their phone number. Um, you can also reach them through the program website, which is, again, bayren.org, um, and they are there for you and can help answer your different questions. Um, next, I am going to hand the presentation off to our participating contractor, Curtis. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Ellie. Uh, super excited tonight to talk with you guys. Uh, I love that we opened up this conversation with uh, questions of why we're here and what we're looking to get out of this uh, presentation. Uh, I've been part of this program uh, early on and 
Uh, this is really neat to see people knowing the direction that they're trying to go. If they're going all electric, they're, they're getting more efficient and just getting more comfortable. So um, that's really what we do. And uh, I'd love to share a little bit about our company and about our services and also share uh, our, some of my knowledge, answer some questions from um, all of you that in the Q&A here. Uh, next slide. Ellie, are you? There we are. Great. So here's just a little bit about us. Uh, Mason BBP, we've been around since 1971. Uh, we've been building houses and fixing houses uh, during that period. Did a lot of stuff wrong and learned a lot along the way. So uh, we got into specifically energy upgrades uh, around when the program started. So we're not just a traditional HVAC con uh, contractor where we do uh, say, all sorts of service work and fixing thermostats, things like that. We, we, our HVAC is solely uh, dedicated to energy upgrades. Uh, the general con construction side, same. We're, we're uh, an insulation. So we, we really look at homes issues. Uh, we take a building science approach and we fix those houses, come up with solutions for them. We are trained and certified, just like Ellie had mentioned there. Uh, we uh, mainly stay in the East Bay area and uh, we do specialize in electrification. So uh, I come from electrical background to start. So uh, really uh, kind of segued perfectly into uh, the, the, the future here where we're using heat pumps and using uh, electric technology to do the work in our homes and even on the roads now. Uh, we uh, wanna talk a little bit about what building performance is. So it's really just how uh, the building carry out its functions, how efficiently it does the work. Um, also, we want to focus on, on uh, how to lower our carbon footprint. Uh, we, in, we improve our indoor air quality. We know that uh, we're kind of in the, we're, we're in the fire season now uh, and uh, we're closing up windows, but it's also pretty warm out there on certain days. So we want to focus on how to tighten up the envelope or the, the house itself to keep you um, comfortable, but also uh, also safe and, and, and breathing well uh, along during that time. Uh, next slide. So we partner with our with our uh, homeowners. Uh, we're not uh, we're not looking for just one estimate using a template. This is what you need. Um, good, better, best is um, you know not the approach we use. We we. We basically look at your house as a whole. We come up with a menu of items or menu of, uh, of tasks that could be done to improve that. We look at costs, we look at rebates. Um, we talk about what could work for your home um, when it comes to technology, uh, furnace compared to heat pump, uh, brand, certain brands over others. Uh, we explain these options. We go uh, really into a lot of detail when we, when we talk about these upgrades. Uh, we provide all that uh, information with uh, also low finance uh, options for you. So really you're kind of seeing that all from uh, you know, one, uh, one stop uh, from us where we can put it all together and you can kind of understand all the elements uh, of getting these upgrades uh, done in your home. Next slide, please. Um, so see, these are some of the upgrades uh, that we do and uh, we're gonna leave uh, this slide up during the Q&A so you can look at uh, all of those there. And I think these are in line with some of the, the needs that I was seeing on the chat in the beginning. And uh, I'd, I'd be open to any questions that you all would have in answering um, some of the uh, things that you're looking to find out tonight. Awesome, thank you so much, Curtis. So um, like Curtis mentioned, um, now is the Q&A portion of our program. So if you have specific questions um, for Curtis or Doug about the program, now is a great time to ask them. Um, you can put your questions in the chat, though we would prefer if you use the Q&A function um, so that we can keep track of the questions and the answers. Um, and we would love to hear what questions you all have, especially concerning um, the different projects you all mentioned. And we will give everyone some time to type up, out their questions. 
um, and look at this slide, uh, four different examples or different types of projects uh, that can be worked on. Okay, um, first question. So someone said they've heard that the Bay Run rebates have run out and is and they are asking if they are still available. Uh, they're they're definitely still available. Uh, there was uh, a different uh, program that has run out. Um, uh, a Clean California. Um, shoot, I was trying to think of the name of it, but this yeah, the Bay Run program is still. Uh, available, yes. Um, I would add that uh, the program has been around for at least a decade. Um, it's unlikely to end anytime soon, uh, but it is worthwhile to uh, always go in and check the website if you're getting ready to uh, consider a project. The uh, requirements change each year. They kind of uh, re-examine uh, the sorts of rebates that they want to offer, the size of the incentives involved. And uh, sometimes, for example, during COVID, they were offering a bonus uh, for people to uh, take on extra jobs just to be able to uh, keep everybody busy. Um, and they've also kind of shifted the focus in recent years to more electrification. So uh, it's worthwhile to take a look at it, but as a general statement, it's unlikely to end anytime uh, in, the, in the time frame that any of us have to worry about. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, next question. So uh, this person has a fairly new, maybe six years old tankless water heater, but it's gas. Um, would it be a good idea to replace this? Well, it just depends on really your, your goals. If you're trying to uh, go completely electric, then yes, it, it does need to go. Um, at the same time, I would say that uh, you're definitely more efficient than a traditional tanked gas water heater. So uh, in the beginning of this program, uh, they were uh, focusing on tankless water heaters and there was, uh, you know, there still is rebates for that. So uh, it really just depends on what direction you want to go in your, in your uh, home. If you're just electrifying, then of course that needs to go. But uh, I would say that you might, um, you know, if you're seeing savings from that maybe uh, look at other parts of your home to upgrade um, and leave that one in, in, in place. There is a requirement with each one of the um, upgrades that you put in, uh, whether it's replacing a water heater or replacing a furnace or um, anything of that type, in which there has to be a measurable uh, difference in the efficiency of the new equipment that you're putting in over uh, the equipment that you already have installed. And so again, at the bayren.org website, uh, you will see that uh, the specifications are there uh, so that you can judge whether or not the new unit that you're planning on putting in uh, meets the requirements for an improvement in efficiency over the old. Um, there is also, Curtis, maybe you can help me out there. Uh, there is a requirement with regard to the age of the homes that we're looking at. So. If you've got a brand new home, I think it's anything post 2015. Uh, yeah, tw no. 26, 2016. Okay, uh, so your home has to be older than that. Uh, and that basically, again, is because uh, your home already is much more efficient than many of the older homes that many of us are living in around here. So a lot of this program is intended to um, help us become more energy efficient uh, without having to build all new housing stock for everybody, myself included. Sure. <laughs> all right. Um, the next question has about three questions. So I'm going to start um, with one of them. So Doug, you mentioned the $5,000 cap. Um, and this person wants to know if this is for one project or if you can reapply for a second project and another pot of money and how that works. It's a cumulative or a, a maximum of $5,000 per home at the current time. Uh, but that is made up of, for example, if you insulate your walls, you can get up to about $1,000. If you insulate your ceilings and attic space, you can get up to about $1,000. So if you did both of those and got the maximum, you'd get $2,000 back. There would still be $3,000 that you could get for doing other things such as replacing or sealing your ductwork 
or replacing an old furnace or a water heater or something of that type. Uh, and it, it can be uh, that while most people tend to um, uh, do multiple uh, rebatable items at one time, uh, it is possible for you to say, well, this year I want to replace my furnace. Uh, next year, I want to replace my water heater. You can keep coming back uh, up to the $5,000 limit. Great. Thank you, Doug. Um, this question is also for both of you, probably Curtis. Um, what is your experience with PACE financing? Um, you know, it's to, to be honest, I haven't used PACE in a little while. Um, so uh, I would. I don't really have a, a great answer for that. I know I have um, finance, or we, uh, us as a company has financed with that um, program, but I personally haven't been much involved in that part. Um, you know, it's important that um, you understand the terms of uh, the financing that you do choose to use. Pace, Pace is interesting for the fact that uh, what you really are getting is a way to finance uh, home upgrades uh, and it gets applied as a uh, term loan against your income taxes. And just to use kind of a, um, a simple number, uh, you could do $20,000 worth of upgrades to your home. That $20,000 would be added to uh, your property taxes and would be paid back over some set term. It might be five years, it might be 10 years. And if it was 10 years, then you'd be paying an additional $2,000 per year on your income, or excuse me, on your property taxes, uh, plus some interest rate. Uh, the interest rate would be very competitive compared to the outside world. Uh, but, you know, it, it, it does represent um, an obligation uh, that you would have to take a look at. Uh, that might become a factor if if you're looking at a potential sale. Um, so the other thing on most of these financing uh, programs is that you can do more than just energy upgrades. Uh, you can get solar, you can get the windows and doors and the various other big ticket items that Bayran can't cover. Uh, but if you need to remodel your kitchen uh, up to a certain percentage of the total project amount, uh, there, you can also finance um, the kitchen uh, remodel, as well as putting in uh, various other types of improvements in the home, which are related to energy efficiency. Did I uh, get that one pretty well uh, there, Curtis? Yeah, and I, I'd like to add to that. Um, you know, we there's other programs like Doug mentioned that can um, help, and Paces uh, obviously has uh, its. Um, it, it, you know, it's a good program as well, but I would say that California uh, as a state uh, really collaborated on coming up with a program called Go Green Financing. Go Green Financing uses local credit unions. Um, they have almost, in most times, lower than their competitors' um, interest rates, and it doesn't go against the home at all. So uh, with, with Go Green, uh, you can be financed um, for not only the energy upgrades, but also uh, a portion can go towards, uh, say, flooring in your home or uh, other aesthetic improvements that might need to be done there. So uh, that might be another resource that you check. Uh, GoGreenFinancing.com is, is another great place and resource for financing for your home. Um, you said it was financing.com? Uh, yeah, GoGreenFinancing.com. Oh, awesome. Okay. Yeah. Great. All right. So the next few questions are about attic insulation. Um, and I'm going to ask them in the order that makes the most sense. Okay. Um, so the first question is, if this person insulates their attic, does it need to be inspected in person in order to qualify for a Bay Run rebate? Um, so the, I guess that I guess I would ask if they're thinking that they can insulate their attic themselves, um, then they, they wouldn't be able to get the rebate. Um, it does need to be uh, a certified contractor in the program. Um, the inspection typically would be done by uh, the local jurisdiction, either county or city um, inspector. Um, they would sign off on that, ins uh, on that insulation and, uh, and that permit. And then uh, that's when we can apply for 
the rebate through Bay Ram. Awesome. Thank you. Um, so I think that also answers this question, but this person said that they know their attic needs insulation and ventilation and duct work. Um, it also needs to be cleaned after a rodent issue, which is now resolved. They want to know if they need to use a, a Bay Run contractor. Um, so yeah, I would, I'd like the to... Question, um, yeah. The question is, do they need to use a special contractor for that outside of the Bay Run program? Well, um, to be able to get the rebate, uh, again, you need a, um, a participating contractor. Um, I'd like to add to that. Uh, I had attic insulation in my um, nearly 70 year old home that was just added to, and it was up to R44. So what I first did was add insulation on top, top of the insulation I already had, did no air sealing. Um, that was just uh, when I was first learning about getting more efficient. And uh, we always had uh, issues in our bedroom where we had the smell and we were um, really uh, kind of congested. Uh, what was found is there was a rodent problem above our bedroom, um, and uh, we completely vacuumed the, uh, the all the insulation out, so full removal. Um, we disinfected, stopped the rodents from getting into the attic, and then air sealed and re-insulated. So um, my wife and I saw a huge improvement from our for, for our health standpoint, and then our insulation, because it was just added to, it was really compacted. Um, so we didn't actually see the same uh, improvement for uh, energy um, there until we actually put in um, all new insulation. So air sealing and uh, new insulation um, is very important there. Uh, so uh, that's just a personal experience that I have to really say that these things make a big difference and insulation is one of the best improvements you can make for, for low cost. Uh, so uh, if someone's telling you that they can air seal without removal, it's, it can be done, but it's not going to be as thorough, uh, as thorough as it would be if it was a clean attic where we can see all of the spaces uh, that need to be sealed up. Great. And I would add to that that um, you can have a contractor come in to add insulation and uh, maybe seal the ductwork or replace the ductwork. But if, in fact, you have a rodent problem, too, uh, that needs to be dealt with, the same contractor, I'm sure, can probably handle that. But there is no rebate from Bayren for that. The, the rebates from Bayren would apply to toward the cost of uh, the ductwork and or the uh, addition of the additional uh, or the, of the new insulation that would be going in. So those other things are, are just costs. Uh, which unfortunately uh, don't earn any rebate. Okay. Um, similarly, someone is in a 50 year old home. They did attic and under the floor insulation in the 1980s. Um, is this something Bayren can review to see if it's still working? Yeah, absolutely. So when, uh, when a home is, we, we do first a, a visual inspection so we can look at the condition of uh, the insulation, um, the installation itself, because that's really important when it comes to insulation, because uh, you can have the right R values, but not be uh, installed correctly and have uh, gaps and, and energy loss there. Uh, so it wouldn't necessarily be Bay Ren that can take a look. It would be uh, some contractors that you might call uh, like ourselves, and then we can come up with an approach to um, bring it up to the R values that uh, are required for the program. If it makes sense with the right uh, arrangement, it might be uh, something that can be added to. Like I mentioned, though, it depends on every house is different. Every installation is different. Awesome. Thank you, Curtis. Um, someone wants to know if you have experience with dealing with knob and tube wiring in addition to attic insulation, which attic insulation definitely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So um, like I said earlier, I was a, an electrician first. So we were called out for what we call a C10 clearance. So C10 is the, is the certification that an electrician holds in California. And uh, that is just uh, a sign off on all of the knob and tube in the attic 
making sure that uh, there isn't any what we call flying splices or connections without junction boxes, anything that could um, create a, a fire in your attic with direct in, um, contact with insulation. So um, per the building code, all homes have to be um, C10 certified with knob and tube before insulating. Now, at the same time, I will say that uh, with knob and tube wiring, if you're looking at insulating your attic, um, you might get a quote or a bid or several bids for rewiring that house because you're really, um, e even if it's signed off on, you're still putting kind of the carriage before the horse, if you will. You're putting insulation in an area that really um, needs to be worked in and needs to be um, accessible for a rewire. Um, rewires uh, are a bit of a project and it would be, uh, in my opinion, a, a good idea to get kind of the full picture cost breakdown and make an assessment from there. But yes, it can be done. Um, we, do, uh, we do take care of homes with knob and tube wiring as well. Um, the next question is, do Bayron approved contractors do the cleanup that was mentioned? Um, so it just depends on but, uh, what tasks we're, we're talking about. But um, as far as, um, I guess they're probably talking about the removal or rodent infestation. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it's kind of, it depends on how, how bad it is, to be honest. Um, if, if it's something where we can get it out with our vacuums um, and it seems reasonable for the equipment that we have, then we can do that work. Um, but in some cases, um, we have to get a specialist involved because uh, they have uh, they have specific equipment beyond just uh, insulation removal machines. So uh, it just kind of depends on the home and, and how far uh, or how, how long it's had rodents uh, in the spaces. So uh, I would say just have uh, a, a contractor come out and do a, a free estimate, free assessment, and kind of go from there on what their recommendations are. Well, Curtis, I would say that certainly you as a contractor can arrange for uh, the cleanup, even if it's not your crew who does it. Um, certainly yes. you, can, you can do it. You do yeah. turnkey work, right? Absolutely. Yeah. That, thank you, Doug. So yes, it can um, all... All aspects of uh, of improvements we can we can handle and we've done in the past. Um, thank you. It's just if it's going to be done in house or if we're going to have another group come and assist us with that. Yes. Um, the next question is if there is any specific information on cost savings over time with electric appliances. Absolutely. So we have all sorts of data um, for. The efficiencies of all equipment. So we can look at the existing equipment and what its SEER rating is, which is seasonal energy efficiency rating, and um, versus the new um, proposed equipment's SEER rating. And there's a lot of different options um, for, uh, of course, brand and efficiency levels. Uh, with that information, then we can break that down and come up with uh, kind of the um, what what your return on investment would be with different improvements. Um, some of the elements to the improvements are, are, are quicker to, to, to be paid back, of course. Others um, take a little bit of time, but that's all, a bit, uh, that's all information and, and data that we have that we can compare to the equipment that you have existing in your home. Thank you. Thank you everyone for these great questions. Please continue submitting them. Um, Doug, did you have something you wanted to add to that one? Uh, yeah, I think, uh... And in general, as, as part of the process that's going on right now uh, with uh, full electrification of homes, the electrification process is first and foremost to cut down on greenhouse gases. Um, and uh, the assumption is that our electricity will be increasingly coming from renewable sources like solar and wind uh, that don't generate any CO2. So um, you can uh, replace uh, older electric appliances with newer electric appliances with higher SEER ratings as Curtis mentioned. So, but the coming technology, uh, the one that uh, really is the way to go for maximum efficiency is called heat pump technology. And that's usable uh, for not only your furnace, uh, which um, by the same token also doubles as an air conditioner, um, 
but you can also use it for water heating and you can also get clothes dryers uh, with heat pump technology and there are rebates for each of those from Bayron. Uh, this is, as far as I know, Curtis, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's the kind of the state of the art for the best efficiency. It does come at a higher price tag, but, but uh, you will uh, save a lot of money over a longer period of time by using a lot less electricity for whatever the purpose is. Agreed. Yeah. So, so we're, what I, like I said earlier, I'm just really excited at, at, um, at talking with you all about electrification. We are seeing um, before it was like early adopters where we were putting heat pump or, or mini split ducted units and just even high wall units. And that was kind of the initial um, kind of debut of, of heat pump technology with, um, with the highest levels of efficiency. Uh, now we're seeing all sorts of technology come out, uh, as Doug mentioned, in um, all the different elements of your home. And uh, solar panels are, are becoming more and more affordable. And uh, we're seeing a big shift in, in how we um, see ourselves producing energy in the future. So uh, there's, there's a bunch of elements to um, your decision there that you wanna put into um, play here. And we can help guide you through you know, what that means and what makes the most sense for your budget and, and for your future goals. And, and thank you for adding that. Cause like I said, it's, it's really important in my eyes to um, go in this direction. Great, and that is a good segue into the next question. So what thoughts do you have about having all electric but going through power shutoffs, especially during fire season and for fire danger? So um, we do uh, install whole house generators. Um, that's probably you know, one of those scenarios where we, it, it does run still on gas there. Um, that is one approach to that. The better approach though, would be um, battery backup. So um, with battery backup, um, you can, during a shutoff still have um, your lights, your, 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 your heating, your, your air conditioning, all of those elements. So there are backup um, uh, solutions in a, in a power outage. And uh, so, I would say in some, and also if you're in a power outage, even if you have a gas furnace, you still need electricity to run the fan motor. So you still um, can't use uh, the furnace side. Yeah, you would be able to use your stove, um, but you're not really um, that far off of not being able to um, kind of power your house in an outage. So there are um, solutions, like I say, um, like batteries and um, generators, of course, we're excited about the generator, or excuse me, about the bet, the batteries over the generators, but there's always a cost comparison there too. Great, thank you for that comprehensive answer. Um, let's see. Okay, um, this person wants to know if there are rebates for um, a combination washer and dryer condenser appliances. I think, did I phrase that correctly? Yeah, I don't, not in the Bay Rim program. Um, we, we help our customers uh, get rebates outside of the Bay Rim program as, as well. I haven't heard of any uh, rebates for that, but uh, we, we are uh, constantly uh, kind of researching and looking for other programs out there outside of Bay Rim. But uh, in Bay Rim, um, to my knowledge, there, there isn't yet, but we, we, we see more and more being introduced to the program. Um, you know, the, uh, like we've seen electrification in appliances like um, switching over from, from gas to induction cooktops. Um, oh, I, I take that back, I'm sorry. So there is a heat pump clothing dryer. Yes, there is $300. I'm sure, I'm sure Doug was just about to stop me on that. There is a, oh. there is a, a rebate. So it looks like, um, Yes, they're right here on my list. Yes, there is. Well, the, the, the I think the question uh, to expand it a little bit is to buy a combo. And of course, uh, the clothes washer itself uh, does not qualify for the rebate. So you're getting, if you buy a combo and, and one half of the combo is a heat pump dryer, then you're going to get the $300 rebate. On the washer side, 
um, one of the rebates, and I don't know if it's still current, but over time, uh, the Energy Star appliances, um, which would include the washer, uh, have qualified for various rebates from uh, PG&E and uh, sometimes from other sources. So in, in fact, again, if you're buying a very energy efficient appliance um, and uh, you might qualify for rebates from a couple different sources to offset some of the cost involved. Awesome. Okay, so this person wants to know, um, so they have a wall heater that currently heats a three bedroom, two bathroom home, and they want to know that if they, they want to know if they were to replace um, their gas wall heater with the heat pump system, what the ballpark cost for that might be. Um, well, every home is unique and there's a lot of different uh, equipment out on the market. Uh, you can you can jump on Amazon right now and look at what a high wall heat pump unit would cost. Um, that's not the say quality of uh, equipment that that we install um, ourselves. So there is a big range and we do have some rec recommendations for for um, one efficiency levels and also, um, say just uh, quality for your investment. Uh, so I would just suggest that uh, we set up a, a time for me to either chat through through Zoom um, do a, uh, or do an in-house consultation to take a look. Um, there is um, rebates for uh, those, uh, those uh, wall furnace replacements. Um, if, if you also have a window air conditioner, you can uh, get a uh, rebate for the ductless mini split um, units there. So there is rebates for that. And I would say that uh, you could either, we could do a virtual walkthrough or even a, in an in-house consultation and come up with a more of a concrete number so you know where you're at for that. Awesome, thank you. All right, everyone. So we are going to start wrapping up our program. So now is a great time to ask any last minute questions you may have um, before we do our closing thoughts and wrap up. Um, additionally, we will be giving you the information um, to be in contact with Curtis and building performance professionals in addition to the um, to the Bay Run program. Uh, if you could uh, advance to the next slide, Ellie. We have one more question. Okay. Um, so this person says that they have an unusual situation where they can't fit a heat pump water heater into the space currently occupied by the tank, by the gas tank water heater. So what would you recommend for a situation like this? Well, we have seen relocations um, where they do make a, uh, an, an outside um, box or steel box that you can um, put the water heater in outside of the envelope. So they make a steel um, enclosure, I should say, that allows us to relocate that water heater uh, to a new spot, uh, space. You then gain some, some storage space and uh, it still will work just as well. Um, we'd like to insulate those, those um, enclosures. And uh, one of the things that's positive about that is there is a condenser on the heat pump water heater. So there is um, a decibel level um, of, of sound or noise that comes from these these units, so getting them outside of uh, the home uh, sometimes is a is a great improvement to um, you know, the elements of uh, of the um, overall installation. Um, so those are things to consider as well. Um, and this question says, are heat pumps for both heat and cooling? Absolutely. So uh, as Doug mentioned earlier, a heat pump is is basically an air conditioner. Uh, in a reverse cycle. So we get the cooling um, comes off the outside condenser. It's pulling the cold air out of our homes and through the refrigerant and getting it to the outside. And then the heat comes off of the inside um, inside evap uh, evaporator coil. So yes, they do both functions and uh, they're uh, much quieter than, than air conditioners of old. They're very um, low sound levels and um, just a, a huge improvement for overall comfort and um, reliability. Great. Um, so I'm going to advance to our next slide. Um, so here is Curtis's contact information. 
um, just so you all know, we will be sending a follow up email with um, the resources that we mentioned and Curtis's contact. Um, but if you want to contact him immediately, if something is sparked and you just have to talk to him, um, feel free to take a picture of this or a screenshot of this slide um, and give them a call. Um, I'll leave it up for a few more seconds in case someone is taking the information down. Okay. All right. Um, so our closing thoughts here. So thank you so much for attending our program and um, for asking these great questions. Um, we, of course, recommend that you talk to an energy advisor so you can complete a contact request form on the survey. Um, that I'm going to be sending to you all right now via link. Um, all right, here you go, everyone. Um, we would definitely appreciate your feedback. Thank you um, again for your participation. Um, additional contacts that we would like to leave you all with are for myself, um, for Doug, and for Damian Hardman. So he is our um, Contra Costa County Bay Run representative. And yeah, I just wanna thank you all again. Um, Doug, Curtis, do you have any closing thoughts? Really appreciate everybody taking the time this evening. Uh, hope that it was informative. And uh, by all means, follow up with questions if, uh, if there's anything more that we can do for you. Curtis? I'd like to say too, the uh, Bayron Advisor um, hotline and, uh, are, are really helpful. They're just a, a great resource for everyone to um, compare bids, um, kind of sift through all this because there's a lot of information. And uh, I, I appreciate you guys having me tonight and uh, hope you all have a, a great uh, evening. Yes, thank you so much, everyone. Yes, thank you all. Um, have a great night. Okay. Wow. Thanks for the assist, Doug. There's been there's a couple.